Hello folks, this is Sulu once again. We're going to be looking here at a playthrough again for Rogue Legacy. Let me talk and introduce what's going to be going on in this playthrough. This is on normal difficulty, the first difficulty, the one that the game starts out on. And in this game, what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking at the Lich class, one that I have not done a video on before. I did play a Lich character on live stream once, but I have not actually played a Lich here uh, and put it up on YouTube before this. Alrighty, so as far as what this class does, this is one of the more unique classes in the game. I'm just going through a very... The beginning areas are very, very easy at this point, so I don't need to talk too much about what I'm doing. You can just watch the action on the screen, and I'll talk about this class. Oh, Votus is up there. We'll come back to him in a little bit. Okay, so what the Lich does is this is a class that starts out with very low health and very low mana. You might have noticed I started with only a little over 100 health. Basically, you start at 35% of what you can ultimately get. Uh, and then each time you kill enemies, you get additional hit points. You might notice it says plus 4 max HP every time I kill a monster. So like right there, another plus 4 max HP. Oh boy. Um, I'm going to try this, yeah. This is the trap I have the most difficulty passing through. Yeah, and you see I got hit again. I'm, I'm just really bad at doing that one. I... Can't, I'm pretty good at most of the traps in here, but I can never seem to avoid getting hit there. But uh, back to the Lich, as I said, you start out with low max health, and then killing monsters increases your max health. Uh, I can hit this guy with the Flame Ring. Yes, there it goes. Might as well take him out. So over time, you grow, uh, grow your hit point total, and eventually you can get it up to being uh, pretty high. You can get it up to... 100% eventually, so you, what is it, it's about triple what you start out with, roughly, something like that, you can triple what you start with, and uh, eventually you'll end up at the same place that the Paladin, who is sort of the default class, starts out with. N needless to say, though, this is kind of a pain in the rear, because you do have to spend a long time farming up your hit points. Anyway, we're going to take on Botus right now. I have, this is a mini boss that pops up a lot, and yeah, he went down pretty fast. Oh, I was hoping for a better reward. All he gave me for winning was gold, so that's, as I said, that's kind of disappointing. You can often get a stat bonus or new equipment or something like that. Oh, well. All right, so the other thing that the Lich does is this class has the ability to use something called conversion. And what that does is it turns your hit points into magic points. You can, uh, it basically it just takes half your hit points, whatever your current hit points are, and converts them into magic points. So, like, right now... If I used conversion, I would lose about 110 hit points, and then that would be added to my magic points. And you can basically get a very high magic point total, really high mana total, if you use conversion at the correct time. And there's a, sort of a correct way to do that. You can get up to... Um, well, okay, hold on. We've got a bit of a tough room here. Oh, took a hit there. Oh, boy. Okay, let's take out the shooting guns. Okay, I think we've got this room under control. These are the tier 3 guns. They shoot homing missiles, basically. They'll chase after you. Alright, that wasn't too bad overall. That looked kind of bad initially. And uh, I do get a rune in that fairy chest for it. Uh, anyway, as I said, so you start out with 50% of your magic point total. You can get up to 200%. Or, in other words, four times the starting value. And this room looks like it's going to be interesting. Ah. All right, we'll start over and try this again. Uh, I need to kill the flying yellow guy first. That's the key one. Okay, got him. Let's back out and try to get the flying mage. Nope. Oh. Well, he did manage to hit me, but fortunately I was able to take out the two guns. Uh, fortunately, the guns only took one hit to take out. That would have been a lot more difficult if they had had more health. This is one of the reasons why normal difficulty is not that hard, because none of the monsters really have much in the way of health. If you can kill them in one or two hits, it's generally not that tough. Plus, they don't deal all that much damage. Okay, so we got the skeleton as well. All, all told, that was pretty good to only take one hit. Now, this, this could be tricky again. Uh, okay, fortunately, the wolves die in one hit too, but I've got some uh, eyeball shooters up there. All right, can just barely jump over the flames. Got one guy. Oh, I didn't even see that gun there. Okay. All right, well, that should be it. Uh, that was a bit sloppy. I honestly did not see the gun there on the ground. Oh, nice. Chicken. Very nice. 
Here's another one. Uh, this particular room layout's kind of tricky because you can't jump due to those flames. Oh, there was apparently a wolf there. I did, did not see him either. All right, well, that was not the best played room, uh, but that chicken dropping helped uh, help me get through and not look so bad. I do have some lifesteal on this character, or, well, it's called vampirism in this game. You might notice that in addition to plus four max health, I'm also getting four health back. Oh, and never mind, got a chicken, so it doesn't even matter. See how it says four HP, two magic points. Wow, another chicken, that's, that's quite a few already dropping. Oh well, pick it up, but it doesn't really do anything. Oh well, so the, the, if you do get lucky and get those chicken drops, then it helps to erase any mistakes that you might be making. And uh, if I had not gotten them, I'd definitely not be at full health right now. But uh, you can see what runes I have down in the bottom left corner. I have the double jump and the dash, which are very standard. Always use them on every character. Then I have one vampirism rune. I knew that painting would come to life, and I should not have gotten myself stuck there. There he goes. Okay. One vampirism rune, and then two balance runes. The balance runes give you back both health and mana. Oh, that was bad. Uh, I actually don't really want the balance runes. I don't really need that mana coming back, which is known as Siphon in this game. Don't really need that, but I haven't found any more vampirism runes. I've only found one, so I'm using balance runes as sort of like a weaker version of vampirism on this character. So that gives me back four, four health and two mana with each monster kill. All right, yeah. Uh, in this room, they've got some paintings and chests. There's also an eyeball down there. Uh, let's take out this chest first. This chest is going to come to life. That painting is not. Now I've got to take out the wolf. That's one hit. And that's two hits. Okay, that went pretty well. And we'll take out the eyeball next. Let's get this guy, the Hulk guard. These guys, the guys with the big shields, they knock you back when you hit them. And note that I am no longer gaining more health with each monster kill. So that means I should probably use conversion and uh, turn that extra health into mana. There we go. See that? I lost 188 health and I gained 188 mana because I used conversion at uh, a pretty good time. I had already done the math on this before playing. All right, so now we've got a tier three wolf guy. I'm just gonna keep knocking him back. If I can keep doing this over and over again, I should be able to kill him without getting hit. Come on, come on, come towards me. Oh, he jumped. Oh, come on. Let's kill him with the flame ring right there, watch. No, easy way to take him out. That's a shame, he, I almost had enough to kill him in three hits, but he got in one more, one more hit on me. Uh, wait a minute, I have to go do something. Okay, I'm back. Sorry. I will just edit out the part where I went away from uh, away from computer for a second. You guys won't see. I had to go take care of something. Alrighty, anyway, back back to Rogue Legacy. So, what was it? I, I just used conversion, and now I'm in the process of building up my health once again. In this room, you have to be careful of these spikes coming through the floor. Uh, on those little patches with the dots, that's spikes come up to the floor. So we got to be careful of that. And let's see, is this painting going to come to life? Yes, it is. But I got a crit, fortunately, so made it easy to kill that guy. When you're in rooms like this, wow, almost took a hit there. Oh, and another chicken, nice. Uh, when you're in rooms like this, what you want to do is try to clear them from the bottom up. It's always, almost always easier to start at the bottom and work your way up as opposed to starting up at the top and then dropping down. Anytime you drop down, it's kind of, kind of dumb luck as to whether you get hit or not, so... Always start at the bottom if you can, and then work your way up. So we're just going to... We can't get behind this guy, so we're just going to... Wow. Oh, boy. I almost hit the spikes there. Got to be a little bit more careful. Uh, can't get behind this guy, so we just want to hit him from the front. You only deal one-third damage from the front. Wow. And uh, He almost knocked me into those spikes. Oh, wow. Another chicken. That's two in the same room. Sweet. And... Another chicken! Wow! Okay, for the moment I'm just going to keep hitting this this guy's shield, but uh, is it just me, or have I gotten a lot of those health drop items in uh, up here in the tower? Uh, you usually do not see this many, but that's three just in this room, and I, I had gotten a, a couple earlier as well. Well, in any case, I'm not complaining, just not every run is this fortunate. Oh, 
Look at what we've got here. We've got a tower guard. This is the tier three version of the guy with the shield. These guys have really high levels of knockback, so you want to get them from behind if at all possible. Uh, plus, they just have a huge sprite model. They're, they're just really big, so you have to be careful with them. They're some of the more dangerous enemies you can run into. Ranger cape, nice. That is an upgrade over what I have. I have the squire cape right now. And uh, the ranger, up ranger cape basically does the same thing. It's just better. And here's another fairy chest challenge. Let's take this on. Hold on, I gotta concentrate. Come on, double jump. Yes, got it. Yes. Very nice. Alright, now I gotta make my way back. Come on. Yes, just in time. Okay, so that looks kind of flashy <laughs> overall. It's not too bad. Okay, I'm just checking to see if there is this is an enemy or not. The big painting will sometimes come to life, but you can check whether it comes to life by uh, trying to read it from underneath. Oh, this is... I gotta use the flame ring here. Come on. Clear all those enemies. All right, not too shabby. One other advantage of the Lich is... Uh, you have the highest magic damage stat of any class, 150% magic damage. So, uh, oh, well, there's another chicken. So anyway, just remove that little mistake. Uh, that means that the flame ring deals pretty good damage, even though... And another chicken. Jesus Christ, what is with all these chickens? Um, uh, wow, that was really bad. As I was saying... Really high magic damage, so even though I have not invested a lot of points into the magic damage stat, I've mostly been putting them into physical damage. This character still deals a lot of damage with his spells, just because the Lich is sort of innately good at cast casting spells. So if you're wondering why have I built this character towards more physical damage, not magic damage, it's due to the fact that uh, all the Lich's spells typically cost a lot of mana. Flame Ring, or Flame Barrier, is actually the one that costs the least. Here's a, a room that just has a chest at the top and no enemies in it. Uh, I've seen You see this room a lot when you play this game. Uh, the big issue is you have no innate way to get magic points back. There's no innate siphon like the Archmage has. Another chicken too, Jesus. Um, no innate siphon like the Archmage has. No way to steal magic points back like the Spell Thief gets in this game. And most of the spells that the Lich gets, the Lich only gets three spells in this game. You have the Flame Ring, which is fairly expensive in terms of magic points, but not too bad. And hold on, I have to do this room. Come back to this thought. Oh boy, I gotta use the Flame Ring. Ah, just got hit by that. Uh, the Lich does not have any escape traits. There's no Paladin Shield or Barbarian Shout or Assassin Smoke Cloud. So you just, you just have to dodge, basically. <laughs> There's nothing that lets you uh, escape projectiles. That was pretty good to only get hit once. Uh, anyway, so the Lich only gets three spells in this game. You, you'll get one of three randomly. The Flame Ring that I have on this guy, which is probably the most useful. Um, you then also have Conflux, which is the spell that causes a whole bunch of little bouncing balls to appear. Uh, one of my least favorite spells in the game because it... Well, more chicken. Uh, doesn't deal much in the way of damage. And uh, is impossible to control, which is random once the little balls start bouncing around. And then finally, the unique Lich spell, which is the Crowstorm spell. Much like the Fiddlesticks Crowstorm ultimate. When you cast Crowstorm, it sends out a whole bunch of crows that uh, automatically hit whatever enemies are on the screen. So it's basically an area of effect spell. If there are 10 monsters on screen, it will send out 10 crows and each one will get hit. If there's one monster on screen, then Crowstorm will send out one crow and you'll hit one monster. So Crowstorm, very good for area of effect, not very good at single target. Uh, the other big downside to Crowstorm is it's the most expensive spell to cast in the game. It costs 40 magic points every time you cast it, 40 mana, and that's a lot. So basically, the Lich, because the Lich has all area of effect mass damage spells, if you try to just cast your way through the dungeon, you're going to run out of magic points really fast. I mean, maybe if you invested everything into mana, and invested everything into uh, magic damage, but uh, you'd still probably run out of magic points pretty fast with this particular class. So my belief is that it's better to play this class. Oh, and the other thing is you only start with uh, a very low mana total. Remember, you have to get a lot of kills before you get that big magic point total. Remember, I only started with like 60, 65 magic points. I had to kill a truckload of monsters and then use conversion to get up to what I have right now. So for all those reasons, I believe it would be really hard to get started with this class 
if you just tried to go with uh, spellcasting, that's the boss store, by the way. We'll maybe come back there later. We'll see. Uh, so my belief is it's better to play this guy as a physical damage dealer, uh, just because it would be very difficult to get started if you played purely as a spellcaster. We're going to do the same thing we did before. This is, by the way, the same room layout we saw earlier, the one with the flames up on, up on the ceiling and uh, this little uh, cubby hole down here in the bottom. So we're going to use this area. Uh, well, I jump right into that shuriken from the ninja, but... We're going to use this area to try and take out the monsters from down here. Because if I go up there, I can't jump due to the flames jumping around, uh, passing around up there on the ceiling. So just wait for these guys to hang out by the entrance and take them out one at a time. Or get this guy. There's one more ninja over here. There we go. Okay, not too bad. Now let's get the rest of the room. Is there anything over here to the left? I, I cannot believe I walked into that. That's... That's rather embarrassing. I just walked into it. Anyway. Uh, let's see. We've got one guy over here. And I'm going to take that hit because I can't jump. Because if I do, I jump into the flames. Ooh, dual plant mini boss. Well, I will keep them in mind. Maybe I'll come back to them later. Uh, that's it. That's the whole tower. See? Got the whole thing cleared out. Uh, outside of some stupidity in this room, where I took a couple hits at the end, that was pretty good overall. So uh, let's go ahead and head down to the castle and uh, look to make our way to either the basement or the forest. Probably the basement, because I'm close to full health. Basement is the hardest area in uh, the overall dungeon. So, uh, anyway, this room... Yeah, you note, know how, again, how much easier the castle is in comparison to the rest of the... In comparison to, like, the tower. Everything here pretty much dies in one hit. This is the starting area. This is a very easy... Very easy area. So I'll, I'll rebuild some health here. Even if I don't get any more chickens... And I've gotten a disgusting amount of them already. Just killing enemies gives me back health due to the fact that I've got that vampirism. And that was really dumb, but shouldn't matter that much. So we'll head down and try to find the basement from here. Here's a room that would be really hard on uh, New Game Plus or New Game Plus Plus, but pretty easy here. And we're right back up to full health again. Thank you very much for yet another chicken drop. I wonder how many that is. Uh, it's been a lot, certainly. And there we go. Here's the basement. I've got full health. So let's go down. Oh, and we've got a fun room right off the bat. Oh, come on. Just got to dodge this. Keep moving. And you know you know what? I really should have used the flame ring there. That would have been an ideal time to use it. And then there's a flask even dropping. But not too bad. One hit. Not too, not too bad. Could have done it better, but I'll be okay. And there's another flask, so I would have been at full mana. Uh, oh, this room's got more guys up above. Fortunately, I'm coming at this room from the bottom. Uh, if I were up top, then the mages could cast their spells to the floor, whereas those uh, star guys who are shooting can't. Yeah, like, see how the mages cast to the floor. But uh, these guys are not, not too bad. Three hits, not, not, too, not too difficult to kill them with melee attack either. And these guys, the Plankies, as the name says up there, the star shooting guys, as long as they're by themselves, they're easy. The problem is you often fight them in a room with like 10 other enemies, and then it turns into the bullet hell that we're all so familiar with. Alrighty, well, I'm back to full health pretty much once again, just due to the lifesteal that I have, so that's very nice. This game gets a lot easier once you have some lifesteal coming in. Nothing in here except more flasks that I don't need. Oh, okay, fairy chest. Well, this is going to be a good challenge. Let's see if we can get this plant first. Uh, there's a mage coming over. we got to kill this guy next. Oh, and there's a tier 3 skeleton guy over there. Watch. We need to take this guy out immediately. Okay, flame ring was pretty useful there. Alrighty. Let's see if we can get this shooting. Uh, ball and chain guy caught me. I should have been more patient there. Okay, that was close, but I did manage to get that. All right, let's work the left side of the room next. Take out the knight guy with the spear. Ball and chain guys are placed in a really, really obnoxious spot. Okay, maybe I would have been better off to go down here to the... Wow, that guy hit me. That sucks. Uh, I might have been better off coming down here first to the bottom of the room. 
but uh, I didn't know what was down there. It could have been a spiked floor. Not just a spiked trap floor, but an actual spiked floor. You can get that sometimes. And uh, then it would have been tough to come from the bottom up. Anyway. Still a little bit more to clear. There's still two more enemies in here. Let's get the bottom guy first. Spike traps on the floor, making this a lot harder than it would be otherwise. But And of course, once you kill the ball and chain guys, the spike balls bounce around the room. They also have a lot more health than the other enemies. Note that it takes four hits to kill them. That's not too bad, but uh, it's a lot harder than one hit. And let's grab the fairy chest for our reward. A curse rune, that is not very useful, but whatever. Gotta get them all. There's there's 55 runes in this game, and uh, you need to get them all to start getting stat bonuses out of the fairy chest. Alright. This could be a bit tricky. We gotta dodge these shurikens. Just barely got that. And he commits suicide in the spikes. <laughs> you can knock enemies back into the spikes. Alright, we're gonna have to get this chest over here. And now I need to dodge that. No, I, I didn't think I'd be able to dodge. I'm not surprised that I got hit by that. Okay. Well, what this means is instead of pursuing further into the basement, let's back up, go back into an easier area. We'll go back into the castle and look to rebuild health there. Uh, by the way, I have hit the max health total again, 376 against um, 250 mana. So anyway, let's uh, go ahead and explore more of the castle, the easy area. Use it to rebuild health and go from there. Uh, I didn't get any chicken drops down there in the basement. Notice how much more difficult that area was. Uh, it's definitely the hardest area. Definitely the hardest area here uh, in normal mode at least. It's, I mean it's the hardest area on every difficulty. One thing that is true about normal is the different areas are more pronounced in their gradations of difficulty if that makes sense. Like um, oh, I got the chance to pick up Crow Storm, but you know, I think I would rather keep the Flame Ring, in all honesty. I think the Flame Ring is more useful overall, uh, particularly for bosses. Well, that's very nice to get a chicken there. Um, anyway, to go back to that previous point, here on Normal, there's a really big difficulty between, say, the castle and the basement. On higher difficulties, they are of still, of course, harder, but not by as much. And actually, on New Game++, Plus Plus. The castle is almost equally difficult as the other areas. Now what that's going to mean as a lich for when I get to the higher difficulties and I have to farm up health at the beginning of every run, uh, that means bad things. It's going to be a lot harder on New Game Plus and New Game Plus Plus. And there's another chicken, very nice. Um, it's going to be harder on the higher difficulties, uh, like much hot harder on the higher difficulties because of the way that that works. But. Uh, we will deal with that when we get there. I suppose I'll deal with that when I get there. I am not jumping through that um, that fire trap thing if I don't have to. I mean, here, like, this is really easy. Everyone dies in one hit. They're all the lowest uh, first tier enemies. None of the upgraded version of any of these enemies. That is something that I actually like that Rogue Legacy does, that they... Uh, you know, they have, like, upgraded versions of each monster. And, and I know that that's done just to make it easier on the game's developers, that they're basically palette-swapped versions of the same enemies. But I kind of like that, too. Uh, it definitely feels like the difficulty is going up when you go from these easy guys who die in one hit to monsters that look like them but are a lot more intimidating. Anyway, I, I know it's a, a way to uh, maximize resources on a part of this game, which is from an indie developer, but it's something that I enjoy. Uh, where do we go from here? Let's see. Hmm. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to pop back down here and look to continue onwards because I'm pretty close to full health now. Uh, one more chicken will take me back up to full. And at the rate that I've been getting them in this run, uh, that might be sooner rather than later. Alrighty. Now, again, the dangerous enemy here is the cloud guy, the guy in yellow, uh, just because he dictates the pace of the action. He charges very aggressively towards you. The mages are not as aggressive, so that makes them a little bit less dangerous. Oh, so we got two mages. There's another one down below me. Let's get them both. Three hits. All right, now here we've got the upgraded version of those knights, Grey Barons. Uh, they're a lot more intimidating, and they deal very high damage. They, these guys deal the most damage uh, of any enemy type, largely because their attacks are so easy to dodge. You know, they have a huge wind-up animation on their swing. So the game's very fair in that respect, but if you get hit, you do take a lot of damage. 
All right, another big room. Oh, I didn't think he was going to fire that fast, but let's let's take out these guns first. All right, now that I'm over here, I can take out the knight, the Grey Baron, I guess I should say. Wow, even with a crit, four hits. A lot of health on these guys. And, uh, okay, nothing over there. That spike ball won't hit me. You can see it passed right over my head harmlessly. Oh, uh, this is going to be fun. Uh, there was really nowhere to go right there. Uh, if I jumped, I got hit by the Grey Baron, and if I stood in place, I got hit by the Spike Balls. Okay, well, see, what happens is when you leave a room, it resets all the enemy health, so that's why you have to be careful about that. Uh, I want to take out the Knights first, because once I kill this guy, there's going to be a Spike Ball bouncing around. I'll try to get it so the Spike Ball is in the wall when he dies. Got one, but uh, the one that was next to him is still bouncing around. This guy, another ball and chain guy. It would be nice if that bouncing spike ball would go away. They only bounce so many times. Eventually, they'll disappear. They have a set number of bounces, and then they will self-destruct. Look at this. This one like has a mind of its own. It was chasing me for a second there. Let's try to get this one when... Uh, when it's he's in the wall, I got one of the... Uh, See, he wasn't able to get the other one. But another chicken drops. That's two more in this room. This is getting getting to be ridiculous how many I've gotten. Uh, way more than you get on a typical run. And this is the boss door in the basement. Well, uh, fourth boss. But since I have full health and full mana, I am going to teleport right up to boss three. And let's take him on while we've got full health. Then I can, uh, if I take a lot of damage, I can retreat into the castle and heal up again. So let's go after this guy, shall we? This is Ponce de Leon, the third boss. A lot of people think he's the hardest boss. Uh, I'm not sure if I necessarily agree, but he is one of the harder bosses in this game. He is, of course, another one of those flame guys. Ah. Uh, one of the hardest things about Ponce is the spike balls that bounce around in his room. Uh, all Ponce does is he chases you. Like, his AI pattern is very simple. He just chases you and he leaves flames behind him. So basically, you run away. Oh, I did not mean to down attack there. That was, that was silly. Come on. Oh, what is this? Something with my computer. I don't know what that was. Uh, Pop-up message or something. Anyway, uh, all that Ponce does is he chases you, but the spike balls and the flame trail he leaves does make this a little bit tricky. Uh, I'm not having a great Ponce fight here. I've done this much better on other times. He's easiest to hit down at the bottom of the uh, of the room because you're on a flat surface. Okay, got out of that. Ow, oh, I thought I had enough distance, but I probably needed to dash there. Uh, so, I mean, this is the battle. Just run away and hit him, basically. And right there, I got a good sequence. I hit him about four or five times. So, just run and, run and attack, basically. That's all there is to it, but... It does take some mechanics. And another hit by the spike ball, and another hit by the spike ball. So, let's just turn on the flame ring. And you know what? I probably should have turned that on a lot sooner, because he died really fast to the flame circle. Yeah, that... That, I probably should have done that sooner. <laughs> but, um, I don't know. It's been a while since I played this guy with the Flame Ring. Not since I had an Archmage. Two hit point increases and a magic point increase. Okay, that's not too shabby. I'll take that. The health increases are more useful. This class gets a lot of mana, so I don't need to sink that much into mana. Alrighty, so there we go. Cost me about half my health. And uh, let's let's jump on back over here. And we'll finish up the rest of the castle and use that to rebuild health. Uh, anytime you beat a boss, you get three stat upgrades, and they're completely random as to what they are. There's about five or six different things you can get. I tend to like health and physical damage the most. They tend to be the most useful ones, but you can also get armor, mana, magic damage, things like that. Oh boy, this guy can shoot through the wall, but he dies in one hit because we're back in the castle and this is an easy area. That flask is appreciated. Oh, by the way, did you notice I actually got, uh, I was actually getting plus to health there, plus to maximum health again. That's because those, uh, health upgrades allowed me to increase my max health total on, like, one or two enemies there. So now I've got, what, 386 health? That's a little bit more than where I was before. Kind of nice. And this area is pretty easy. Not too much to say about this area. Just killing the enemies, getting some health back. 
picking up the minimal gold that drops. Uh, you get a lot less gold here in the castle, too. You might have noticed that the chests don't give as much gold, the monsters don't give as much gold, uh, in exchange for this area being easier. But I still get... Oh, well, there we go. That's what I was hoping to find. Another chicken. I do still get four health back for, per monster killed due to my lifesteal. There's the entrance to the forest. Very nice. We'll maybe go in there in a second. I'm going to finish up this part of the castle first, though. We'll see what's up in this room. Not too much to, Not too much here, it looks like. Oh, what's this? Oh, we got a Tier 3 version of the Spear guys. Well, that's interesting. So these guys, aside from having a much bigger character model, once again, they will shoot their little white projectiles in three directions. Straight ahead, diagonally up, and diagonally down. Uh, every now and then you'll see one of these guys. Again, in New Game Plus Plus mode, everyone is one of those Tier 3 guys. Every single monster is a Tier 3 monster, so that's why it gets difficult. It gets a lot harder. <laughs> Normal's pretty easy, all told. Normal is not that difficult to defeat. Anyway, I am not quite up to full health yet, so let's go ahead, jump over here. We'll pop into the forest for a little bit, see if we can lifesteal a little bit more health back. And then I'll just head back into that teleporter when I'm close to full health. And then we'll go back into the basement again. This is the pattern I usually do for my runs when I'm getting close to finishing a difficulty. Usually do the tower first, uh, then go into the basement second, and then finally wrap up here in the forest. Which is kind of interesting because the forest is one of the easier areas. But uh, it's pretty far away from where you start out. Um, there we go. Another chicken. Well, back up to full health again, or as close to it as need to be. So let's pop on back down to the basement again, shall we? And uh, look to clear out that area. Definitely make use of the teleporters. Go from place to place. Don't just uh, stay in one area at all times. It's quite useful to go and work uh, harder areas and easier areas back to back. And let's just dodge that for safety's sake. I'm pretty sure... I actually, I think I walked underneath that earlier. So I guess that was pointless, but um, I don't know. For one reason, I just, in the moment I there, I just thought I had to dodge. But yeah, look how much more gold I get in a chest down here in the basement. Significantly more. Right now, I'm at about, what, 27,000 gold? That's pretty good. We'll see what I end up for overall. Oh, okay, this room. Okay, so this room is a maze. It is a no-jumping one. In order to do this, you go into the fourth entrance, and then just go left. Or you could think of it as going in... Uh, spot number four and then spot number one. So take the fourth fourth dropping point and then go left. You will always get the chest if you do that. It's four and then left, left, left the whole way. And that way you can always win this room. I figured that out just through trial and error. The minimap sometimes gets screwed up down here in the basement. I don't know why. Ooh, this could be tricky. We gotta kill this mage. Oh, hello, there's a zombie here, and that guy is still alive up there. Oh, get down here. Okay, I should be able to do it in safety from here. But that, that could have been handled better, obviously. Your sword will reach them through that barrier. Look at that, look at that. These guys have like one health left. Takes them from three hits to four. Now, if I'd gotten a strength bonus from uh, Ponce de Leon, they would have died in three hits there. Oh, well. Okay, not too bad, but certainly could have been done better. Uh, I did get a ch Oh, come on. I did get a chicken which in this room, which makes it look better. Ugh. That last hit was terrible, though. Look, that guy went down to one uh, sliver of health, too. Alrighty, let's see. What's in here? More of the blob enemies. Let's see what's down here. Oh, okay. That was closer than it needed to be. Uh, I guess I'll go back up to the top again. Clear out that room. Usually I don't. I like to uh, clear a room if I put it on the mini-map. Otherwise it gets too confusing if you have a lot of uncleared rooms. Look at that guy. One, one sliver of health. Okay, so we've got two of these blobs. One at the top, one at the bottom. Let's see if we can get him to jump up here. Yep, that's good. Okay, this is convenient. The blobs die in one hit. Very nice. Uh, this this guy gets a lot harder when it takes two or three hits to kill the blobs. When they die in one, it's pretty pretty uh, safe. Here's another nice thing about the big blob guys. Every blob you kill, you can get life steal or vampirism, I should say. You can get vampirism and siphon off of each blob that you kill. Helps make it easier. And maybe I can kill this guy from below. 
Yeah, see how they keep splitting? There's actually an upgraded uh, blob that goes beyond um, beyond this one, too. The Blobosaurus Rex, it's called. And, and well, this game's being really generous with the health on this particular run. Uh, there's nothing in here, so there's no reason to stay. That room just has a spiked pit down at the bottom of it, so I'm not going to waste my time. I've seen that room formation plenty of times. Okay, looks like there's not too much more in the basement. Uh, room with shooting guns. Oh. This is a room where I need some kind of projectile spell, like the chakram or the dagger or something. Something to hit these things from a distance. Well, I took a hit, but only one. Could have been better, I guess. Yeah, could have been better, but didn't take too many hits. And the minimap is screwed up again, but we know which way to go. I have to go back here to the left and then down. The same room that I peeked into earlier, this one here. There we go, that's better. Oh, we got a tier 3 uh, fire mage. Okay, we're going to take this guy out with the flame ring. Watch. Because of those... Uh... Oh, imperial helm, that's an upgrade. That's better than the ranger helm I'm currently wearing. Because of the fire ducts from coming down from the ceiling, I didn't have room to maneuver there, so I just decided I'd use magic power to uh, kill him quickly. And uh, that's it. That's the full basement. So that's most of uh, that's most of this area. Well, the only place left to go is the forest now. So um, let's head into the forest. I'm gonna teleport over there and take a hit stupidly again. If I can just get into this room, I never have to deal with those spike balls again. We're going to go in the forest. I'm going to keep going until I have full health and full mana. And then I'm going to teleport down to the uh, basement boss. The, uh, the Herodotus boss down there. So let's see how many rooms it takes to get this. Alright, one, two. Well, that guy died in one hit as well. I knew the eyeballs would die in one hit. I didn't think the flying mage would die in one hit. Alrighty, that's pretty easy. Let's get the chest. Some of the gold fell down to the bottom. But you should always grab each gold coin, unless it, you like have to get a hit to get hit to do it. You never know when having one uh, one more coin will make a difference. And by the way, here's the weaker blob version, guys. These guys only split once, as opposed to split, splitting like what was it twice? Alrighty, let's see what's down here. Here is the uh, another one of the flying mages. You saw the highest. The tier 3 mage, that's the tier 2 mage that's in orange. And we saw some of the tier 1 guys back in the in the castle. I'm right just about at full health and full mana now, so let's clear this room. I don't know what the headless horse is doing down there. Seemed a little bit confused, but let's finish clearing this room. One more guy. And that's it. Okay, well, full health, full mana. Time to go and take on the... Uh, Basement boss, who I don't think I've shown on stream before. I don't think I've shown this on live stream or on video. Maybe I'm mistaken, but I don't believe I fought this guy. I don't believe I fought Herodotus before on video, so... Where is it? Oh, well. One other thing I'm going to take care of first, and that is I'm going to kill the double plant boss. Where was that? That's right. I wanted to kill this guy first on this particular run. I do intend to go and kill the basement boss as well, but take this guy out first. Alrighty, so double plant mini boss. Go ahead and turn on the flame ring to get these guys. These guys can deal a lot of damage, so you do have to be careful with them. I'm going to use the flame ring though, so I don't have to get so close. There we go, not too bad. Only one hit. Did cost me a lot of my magic points. There we go, there's a strength increase. See, that's a permanent strength bonus. Now I just need to get some magic point flasks, and then we'll be back in business. And I can go back and fight Herodotus down in the basement. Doing things a little bit out of order. But uh, not shouldn't be too big of a diversion. Alrighty, let's go. Once again, taking advantage of those teleporters to move around the dungeon from place to place. And I don't know what that was again. Sometimes the game gets that pop-up. Alrighty. This room's going to be annoying because of the spiked floor. Fortunately, though, only the very basic eyeballs, the ones who only shoot one projectile, as opposed to their uh, cousins who shoot out tons and tons of them. All right. Wow. Two flasks in the same room. Three flasks in the same room. Holy cow. Well, that was generous. Anyway, I'm almost right back up to full mana again. 
Just need one, and now I am back to full mana, or as close to it as matters. Okay, that was very, very generous. <laughs> I didn't think I would get that, but the game, the game provides, fortunately. Alright, more Bone Throwers, Flying Skulls. Oh, there's a chicken. And there's another one! Oh, are you kidding me? That was two more? I don't even need that. I'm just going to leave it in case I get a hit. Or, excuse me, in case I take a hit in this room. That's pretty ridiculous. Alright, well, easy enough. So, back to full health and back to full mana again. Yeah, the game, this this particular run has been pretty pretty uh, crazy in terms of getting chickens. Like, I, I took a really sloppy hit there, but I, I, I doubt it matters. I'll just get another chicken here, and the game will provide. Or, barring that, I'll just use my lifesteal to get right back up to full health. In any case, now that I'm here, I feel like I just might as well finish clearing through the forest so I don't have to walk back here again later, because I'm pretty far away from the teleporter. So, while we're here, let's just kill these guys and go through the forest. I, I don't have too much to say because this is very obviously an easy area. Like, that was, again, pretty sloppy to take that hit from the bouncing spike ball, but um, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to clear this out as quickly as possible, pick up the gold, and go on my way. Yeah, like, look how far away I am from any of the teleporters. I don't feel like walking all the way back. I'll just cl clear the area while I'm here. One thing about the design of the forest, I think that visually speaking, this is my favorite area because it's much brighter than a lot of the other areas. There's yet, yet another chicken. Maybe I'll do a running count of how many I've done. Go back when I uh, put this put this through editing and just do a, like a running tally of how many there is. Uh, as I was saying, aesthetically speaking, sort of the visuals, I like the way that this area looks just because, as I said, it's the most colorful of any of the areas in this game. This is another kind of obnoxious room where the eyeballs shoot at you from the corner. Um, there's just sort of that humongous glowing moon in the background. I'm just going to ignore that hit. And uh, if you watch the background closely, you'll see things like fly across the moon. There is, I think there's like a little witch that flies across occasionally. You can actually see a Santa Claus with uh, a sleigh pulled by reindeer. It's kind of amusing. So if you, you know, just keep your eye on that and you'll see some interesting little graphics go by. I can't pay too much attention to it while playing, but... Uh, if you're watching here, you can. So anyway, there's the Tier 3 Blob guy, the Blobosaurus Rex. Uh, we'll deal with him in a second. I wanted to clear everything else out of the room first. Now, one thing that really wrecks the Blobosaurus is this Flame Ring. It's actually really good against him. So let's just turn that on. And look, all the Blobs are just getting wiped out. Yeah, there you go. Now, they leave a Fire Trail behind, which makes them can make them very tough in congested areas. But I don't never mind seeing them because, again... You can get a whole great deal of lifesteal off of those guys because each one of them allows you to get vampirism. Um, oh my god, did you, is that three more chickens? <laughs> this run has just been absurd. That's got to be close to 20 of them by now across this whole run. You do not get this many when you play normally. I mean, I'm happy for it, but half of them have just gone to waste because I didn't even need them. Just... I mean, it's just silly how many I've gotten. Crazy. Anyway, uh, so let's go down. There there shouldn't be too much more left of the forest, and that was rather sloppy right there. I, I ha I've honestly not played the forest very well, but it hasn't really mattered. Um, wow, okay. that guy. I thought that guy would take two hits, but I guess he got taken out in one critical. This guy I'm going to make sure... Yeah, make sure that ball gets stuck up in the wall. When you kill the spike balls, you do get lifesteal... Uh, vampirism and siphon off of them. This room could be a little bit tricky, just because I have to approach this from the top down, as it's opposed to going through the bottom. Alrighty, it doesn't look too bad. Let's kill these guys. Those spike balls will be bouncing around, but it's not too bad. Okay, and uh, hello, there's another chicken. Another one I don't need. And one of the spike balls actually died off screen. I saw the vampirism pop up. Uh, over here to the left. Ooh, let's see if I can do this. Come on, no. Apparently I hit the spikes. That's a bit of a shame, but oh well. Here's another... Oh, let's check to see. I don't know if I've seen this one before. I have one day. I don't think I've read this. If you agreed what game would be my favorite, it would be I have one day. Raised on adventure game classics. Revolves around a meta time puzzle where you have 24 hours to beat the game. Every puzzle had multiple solutions. The second ending was added at the last minute. Without it, the whole game would have sucked. 
Yeah, I'm not sure I've seen that painting before. Or if I have, I haven't seen it very often. Okay. That was one of the descriptions I hadn't read before, so that's why I wanted to take a quick look at that. Um, not much in the way of enemies right here. Just obstacles to dance over. This room is really annoying. Basically, it's a spike trap room, and I don't need to go to the left. I've already been up there. Fortunately, the forest looks like it loops around, and here is the boss door in the forest. I've already killed the forest boss, Alexander. Looks like this group mostly loops around. Let's see what's in here. Nothing in this room, just a journal entry. That's where you can read the game's plot, but I've already read it many times. And is there anything over here? Oh, a fountain. So the game was like, we haven't been generous enough with all those chickens. We're going to give you another fountain as well to restore health and mana. Okay, so I don't really need that. Let's, uh, that's it. That's the full dungeon clear. So that's everything. Cleared out all areas. See all, nearly all the chests are picked up. Everything except the one fairy chest. That's literally the only chest I didn't get in the whole dungeon, I think. That's pretty good. <laughs> Got all of the treasure chests. Except one. All right, so... Boss time, Herodotus. Herodotus is one of the big blobs. You can see the, the infinite. So, oh, there's another. You know what? I could have saved that chicken in there until I took damage, but I didn't, I didn't even see it. I just kind of jumped into it. Okay, so the gimmick here is if you just hit the blobs mindlessly, you'll quickly end up with like 30 blobs on the screen. Uh, plus, every time they split, a flying mage comes out. So, the trick here... If, if I can do it correctly, is to try to focus on leaving one big blob intact. Like, I, I want to ignore that blob and kill the smaller ones is the idea. Uh, that's the idea. So uh, be very careful about limiting how many you fight at a time. Plus, before you do anything else, kill the flying mage. Like, kill the mage before you do anything else. Now, unfortunately, that mage takes three hits right now. There we go. But I got him. Uh, the other thing that makes this room kind of tricky is there is a spiked floor down here at the bottom. All right, now I'm down to the smallest blobs, and those are the ones that don't split. Uh, but, like, ignore the big ones and just kill the small ones. That's the recipe for doing this room. If you have the PAD trait, the one that allows you to walk on spike floors, then this room gets much, much easier because you can just ignore the spikes. All right, this is a little bit more than I wanted, and I still want to kill that flying mage, but hopefully not too bad. All right, there's three of them there. Let's take them out. There we go. Okay, that went well. Now, if I can just get this little one, uh, then we'll have cleared out like one quarter of Herodotus. Something like that. There we go. Okay. Now I've got just two blobs. Let's take out the smaller one, as always. The big one is kind of in the way, though. Alrighty, come on. Where is he? There he is. There we go. So, again, just keeping... Ah, uh, I did not think that guy was going to hit me. Uh, again, keep ignoring the big one. And take out the small ones, and that's your recipe for success in this battle. Just keep doing that. And stay off the spike floor and limit how many blobs you're fighting at once. If you can do that, then, you know, you should be able to win. Uh, I admit it can get a little... Wow, I didn't even see that guy. That's my bad. And again, wow, that the big guy is trolling me really hard. Um, keeps coming at me from angles I don't expect. Uh, I mean, their movement pattern is pretty simple. They just basically, like, flop around. One other cool thing about this battle is you can get lifesteal off of each blob that you kill. So you can be getting health back during the battle. Uh, come on. Get out of the way, big guy. Alright, there we go. Once I kill these two blobs... Wow, that was a really sloppy hit to take. I should not have gotten hit by that. Once I kill these two little blobs, I'm halfway through the battle. And honestly, done the hardest half, because it actually gets easier the longer the battle goes on. Uh, because, ah, I, I'm not playing this very well, but trust me, it does get, start to get easier. Okay, so now we're down to just one of these, and now we'll split him. And take out the other ones. Get the mage. Now I can kill either one of these, so it doesn't really matter which one I hit. You, you're next to me. So, um, Wow! I cannot, wow, I can't believe that hit me. Uh, anyway, but like the bait, ugh, this, this battle it should not be this difficult. Uh, I'm just not playing this very well. Uh, anyway, so, when you first play this battle, the idea is someone's just going to like randomly run around hitting, hitting everything, and then there's going to be like 30 blobs, as I said before, like 30 blobs on the screen at once. Uh, but if you're smart about how you play this battle, 
it's not really that hard. I think it's actually maybe even the easiest of the boss battles, in my opinion. Uh, I mean, it, it, it takes a while. It, I think it's the longest and slowest boss battle. But um, it's not very hard to do overall if you approach it uh, from a good perspective. I, I have not even played this battle very well, in all honesty. I've taken way too many hits. And I wasted that chicken that's in here. By the way, and you can get chicken drops inside the boss room, too, uh, from some of these crates. So now we're just down to the last couple parts. Um, I'd prefer to take out this mage first and then go from there. But uh, they'll each split, and then the battle, battle will be over. Come on. It also would be easier if I was doing more damage. I had to do a lot of hits to kill each blob. Ah, come on. Would be nice also... Oh, come on! I'm actually even starting to get low here, but I don't think I'm going to die, even though this has been a horribly sloppy battle. Uh, way too many hits. Ugh. Let's finish these guys with the flame ring. I should have turned that on much sooner. Would have been helpful earlier. All right, there you go. So, uh, terrible battle from me, but I, showed, I, I at least showed on stream how to do the battle, even if I didn't play it very well. At the end there, that was just downright sad how many times I was hit. Uh, really, there's no reason to take too many hits in this battle. Two mana, two mana crystals, and an armor bonus. That's okay, but the, the two mana bonuses are honestly not that useful. Not that big of a deal. Anyway, so I'm low on health right now, but uh, it doesn't really matter because there's nothing else to do in the, in the entire dungeon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back here to the boss store. I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab that fountain that we saw a little bit earlier not forget about it. The fountain is a double chicken and a double flask, so it is right now 30% of my health and 30% of my mana being restored. Each one of these teleporters has a guaranteed chicken and a guaranteed flask, so I'm just going to go around and raid them. There's no reason not to use them. I've saved them the whole game. I never really needed them. Just going to grab them. There are a couple I won't even need to eat. I think there's another two or three I'm not even going to need to use, and now it's time to teleport back to the entrance and go after the final bosses. So yeah, we're going to go after the final boss here. Why not? There's nothing else to do. Let's see if I can finish off this run in style and get a victory. Uh, this could be tough, though. Oh, by the way, this is the same area that you go play in the demo initially. Wow, another chicken. Another one I don't need. This is the same area you play through in the initial demo. Uh, it's designed to teach you a little bit about how to play the game. There's always two enemies in here, two Grey Knights. Uh, but they have a lot of health for whatever reason. Way more than the guys in the in the default starting castle area. So I'm going to go ahead and hit all of these. I know that they don't provide that much gold, but I, you never know when a little bit more gold can buy you another upgrade at the castle at the between runs. So on the little upgrade tree. And there's another chicken. Holy cow, what is up with this? This is some crazy RNG. And an another one! <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, in any case, uh, you have to read through the journal. I'm sorry, I've read the journal a lot of times before. Basically, the plot of the game is Johannes, who is your original ancestor, was corrupted, basically. And you have to fight him now at the end of the game. So here's Johannes, the final boss. And there's a lot of text here, but I'm not going to read through that. I, I'm sorry, I've read it too many times. I'm not that interested. So anyway, you have to fight Johannes. And uh, he can be pretty tough. So he's basically like a doppelganger version of you. He has, wow, ugh. he has, a, you know, he's got the same kind of sprite model, and he's got all the spells that you can use. Well, not all the lich spells, but anyway, I should pay more attention to what I'm doing, because otherwise I'm going to die. He's already taken away more than half my health. Uh, Johannes can be tough. Uh, I want to get over that blade wall that he summoned. Basically, he attacks by swinging the sword and by tossing out uh, spells. I'm going to use the, uh, I wanted to use the flame ring to hit him there. I am going to die if I don't step up my play right now. <laughs> Come on. Keep dodging the axes. Dodge the daggers. Dodge the axes. Hit him with the flame ring. Oh, this is getting close, but he's low too. Come on. One more. Yeah. Got him. That is not easy. Uh, he can be pretty tough. He can be pretty tough. But that's not it, unfortunately. This is a two-part boss battle. The second part is against the Fountain, the Fountain of Youth. Or is this just called the Fountain here? 
Uh, so he, you know, looks pretty scary. I'm going to grab all of these chicken refills. That's four more chickens, by the way, thankfully. He does, do, game does give you the courtesy of giving you some health back. Uh, he summons all these blades, which are a little tricky to dodge, and they deal a lot of damage. This one, I know, you have to jump on his head. When he stabs his sword into the ground, you have to do that. Uh, going to avoid these. I should turn on the flame barrier to get in some free hits with that. The flame do more damage than my sword as well. Get in some hits there and dodge. He's, he's actually taking some pretty good damage here. Although I'm getting low on magic points too. I just have to keep dodging these. If I were a barbarian, I could use the shout and they would all disappear. Oh, or I could use the paladin, use the paladin shield to get rid of them. Uh, just keep hitting him with that. But now I'm just about out of magic points. Let's do a little tap dance on his head. He's getting low. Dodge his melee swing. That's his most easily dodgeable attack. Oh, jump on his head again. He's getting low. Oh, gotcha! Oh, look at that. This is funny. Look at that. 238 out of 136. No, look at my health total. It got all messed up when I beat the game. That's weird. The sun. I had forgotten how it feels. And epic death animation. So we got him. He goes to the same death and a little death portrait that you get. Yay! We beat the game! Woo! So that is normal down. I believe that this is Lich number 13. I'd have to go back and check. So guess what? You actually get to see the end game animation for the first time. I, I have not captured this for YouTube before. So that's pretty cool. I, I actually was not expecting to beat the game on this run, but the run just ended up going really, really well. In any case, they show you how many of each monster you've killed. So, note that I've killed a lot of those little white eyeballs. And for some reason, I'm getting lag here. I guess that's because I'm recording this. Kidder, slain, one. Not surprisingly, you can only kill one when you're on normal difficulty. And those are the flying mages, the, the fire ones. Here are the ice and the earth ones. I've already slain a fair amount of the tier, tier 3 guys uh, when they pop up. Wow, I killed eight. I got... Fought the Flying Mage mini-bosses eight times, Barbatos and Ammon. I didn't realize I'd fought them that many times. These are the zombies that pop up from the ground. Didn't see too many of them on this particular run. The Mimic Chess and the paintings. Note that the graphics are the same for all of them. Uh, only killed Salos one time. That is the painting mini-boss that comes to life. Skeletons. I've killed a lot of the little flying skulls. Look at that, 131 Furies. Interesting. And of course, you've only killed Alexander once, since you can can only fight him once on normal difficulty. A lot of the, the spear guys tend to pop up a lot. You see them quite a bit in this game. I've killed Botus three times. You saw me kill Botus at the beginning of this run. He's relatively easy once you have his pattern down, and I've played him a lot of times. I've already killed six Plonkies. Wow. I guess I have seen them a fair amount already. And a fair amount of the plants, too. It will keep tracking this for as long as you play the game, by the way. So it will add, if you go on to New Game Plus, it will add on to the totals. And it'll just keep tallying them up and up and up. The flying, little flying flame guys you see quite a bit, too. There's Ponce. We killed him on this run. He is the tower boss, of course. So just a few more here. Oh, I haven't killed any of the upgraded chain guys. No chain tests yet. Okay, well, I'll see them a lot going forward. You will see them going forward. Those are the spike balls. Uh, I've killed the spike balls because you kill them when you have the chain guys. There's the upgraded ninja. I, you, never, you do not see any of the upgraded ninja guys in normal difficulty. You'll never see them. Or at least I haven't thus far. Blobs, there's Herodotus. One of the weird things about Herodotus is you if you beat him, it says slain 17. It counts him as getting 17 kills every time you beat him. So that's kind of weird as opposed to the other bosses. I guess that's just how the game tracks stuff. There are the headless horses. And that's just about everything. Oh, the wolves and the wall turrets. I haven't you can, by the way, kill the wall turrets and spike traps. You you actually can kill them. You have to be running uh, retaliation runes. Basically what that is, is when enemies hit you, they take damage themselves. I don't, I do not have any of them running right now. But if you do have them, then you can kill the spike traps. Because they hit you, and then they take damage in turn, and then they die. So that's how that works. And yeah, now we get the credits with uh, more sprite graphics. Note that they've got little spike graf uh, sprite graphics for themselves there. 
the sort of core people who made this game are two people who have the last name Lee, Teddy and Kenny Lee, which is why the first character you play always on every run is always Sir Lee. The level zero knight is always Sir Lee that you start out with. Some pretty nifty sprite graphics there, by the way. Uh, I, I've always liked the sprite art. I think that that's pretty cool. Uh, and then it looks like there's more members of the Lee family who worked on this game because someone is involved in marketing and business and all that stuff. But one of the cool things about this game is the people who made it are uh, very small in terms of numbers. This is not, you know, this is not Grand Theft Auto that had like an entire third world country building it. As far as the credits go, this this game was really made by about I think it was about six to ten people that pretty much made this, and I think it's a really good game. I uh, wrote on my website about how I really have enjoyed this game a lot more than Diablo 3 and about how that was really interesting uh, in the fact that Diablo 3 had like they worked on it for like 10 years and they had hundreds and hundreds of people making it and then this tiny little indie game that a handful of people worked on I just find to be a lot more fun and a lot more satisfying and I think that that says a lot about what goes into making these games in the sense that Diablo was made for like corporate shareholders and this game was just a labor of love. So anyway, there's the stats. 28 total children. That's all the other heirs I had to kill off. And there you go. This is what happens. Start your legacy. New game plus. So this is what it looks like. New game plus mode. So let's go ahead and check this out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you the character screen here if you want to get a look at that. 61,000 gold overall. That is the most I've ever gotten on normal. So that's pretty impressive. My best normal run ever. So we will pick up the adventure here uh, in New Game Plus mode uh, on my website largely. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, check out Rogue Legacy. It's a fun game. Check it out. Till next time, take care. See you guys later.